Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Tuesday Truth. We're in a series called Spiritual Royale, where we've been looking at the armor of God from Ephesians 6. Like the Ephesians, we are in a confused, liberal culture where anything goes. We face hardships and messages that pull us away from God and towards our own desires. Paul starts the letters of Ephesians by reminding the Ephesians of their new identity in Christ. As Christians, the old is now dead. The things they used to do, they should do no longer. They are made new and therefore should not fall prey to what the world calls them now to be. The world we find ourselves in is a constant battlefield for our affections, a battle royale, a hunger games, esque kind of thing where an existence is around a war waging between God's spirit within us and our fleshly desires and wants. I feel this push every single day of my life in many different circumstances or ways. Either I stumble and I look to materialistic things to fulfill my life and make me feel better about who I am or something to give me joy. I might feel jealous about others because I see on social media that they're living these lush lives or that they're successful or popular. And in relation to me, I just don't measure up. The truth of God tells me that Christ is enough for me. But I don't know if I always believe that because he says I am a child of God and therefore things of this world are fleeting and temporary. They are breaking, they rust, they mold and they age. That doesn't mean that you and I cannot enjoy good gifts and good blessings and nice things. Not at all. That's not what God is saying. But it's when the, the problem comes in when we take these good things and make them ultimate things. That these good gifts become my God instead of God himself. How much I have or the perceptions of others of my success actually means nothing in the bigger scheme of things. But yet I can't always seem to shake these thoughts. And these are just but a few examples. I sometimes struggle to believe that I'm loved. I struggle to believe that God is for me. I struggle to believe that God loves me. And that what really matters is relationship with Jesus, to know him, to love him, and to serve him and those around me. If I'm really feeling down, and not believing in these truths and rather believe what the world says, then I feel kind of inadequate, alone, and kind of worthless. This is the invisible battlefield where society meets our lives, wherever we live, where we work, where we study, and where we play. Temptations to satisfy our every desire can come from our hearts all the time. But it's not only that. We know from the word of God that we have an enemy who is constantly at war with mankind, an enemy that wants to destroy us and pull us as far away from God as possible. The problem is, is that he doesn't have to try very hard because the natural disposition of our hearts kind of pulls away from God in its own. He just has to nudge us in little ways and we will fall. Ephesians 6.12 says this, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. In the last few weeks, we've been learning about the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and last week, Dave took us through what the shoes of peace are and bringing the gospel. These are part of the armor that soldiers would wear, and they would walk around everywhere in this kit. They wouldn't be found without it. So the Apostle Paul continues in the letter saying, in verse 16, In addition to all these armors, okay, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. A shield is an offhand kind of armor, meaning that it's something that a soldier has to be mindful of to actually take with him into the battlefield and pick up. Even if you are wearing the other pieces of armor, it's not like you're exactly going to just go and stand in the middle of a battlefield and allow the arrows to just hit you, right? The armor is intended to protect you, yes, but having something that is a first line of defense sounds like a far better idea. A Roman soldier's shield was rectangular in shape and curved around the edges so that it could protect the body all the way down to the knees. This shield was invaluable in protecting the body from a heavy volley of arrows due to its size and shape. 
You could even crouch down and lower the shield to completely cover themselves, leaving no area exposed to incoming fire. Paul says that as Christians at war, we should take up a shield, a shield of faith. It is not a passive thing, but an action to take something up. If you are not intentional in guarding your own heart, then you open yourself up to all kinds of schemes and lies. It's like having that one friend when you're playing online, right? If you're anything like me, um, you end up being that guy where you are hiding behind cover, your shields are down, you've only got a little bit of health, health left and the circle's closing, so you gotta get in there quickly. You see the opposite team and you just start running in. It only takes a couple of seconds before you're downed and screaming to your teammates, help, I'm down, revive me. It's irritating, right? And it's foolish. Why would you run out when you have absolutely nothing to protect you? You run out and get downed just as you leave cover. So we understand the concept that having a shield is vital to survival, right? When you're under siege. What is the shield of faith, though, that Paul speaks of here? Faith means believing and trusting in the truths of God in His Word. Firstly, it is believing the gospel message is true and reminding ourselves daily of what the gospel is. By believing that the work of Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection for the forgiveness of my and your sins, as well as reconciling us back to God, is in fact true. Secondly, it's not reacting to everything, to every situation hastily without a thought and just full of emotion and lack of judgment. It is having wisdom to take a step back and look at God's character and what His Word commands us on that subject. Then we can have wisdom to react and live in a way that not only glorifies God, but that brings us joy, brings us peace, life and fulfillment. When the lie comes, we can stop it in its tracks before it gets to our hearts because we take the Word of God as our measuring stick of truth. It is our measuring stick of truth in relation to the world around us and everything needs to be weighed against that measuring stick of God's truth. And whatever is true, we hold on to, but whatever is a lie, we throw out. Every lie is a fiery arrow sent from the evil one and is a contradiction to God's truth. Its aim is always the heart and the result is always sin. The word sin means to miss the mark and it's actually an archery term. To sin would miss, to mean to miss the actual bullseye. God's truth is the bullseye. And our sin in biblical terms is when you and I miss the mark by not listening to and obeying God because we think we know better and wish to be the captains of our own ships and the master of our own destinies. The shield of faith is so important. And if we are wielding it, then God uses it not just for our good, but so that we can pull in those around us so they might also have a shield to share our faith with them and then teach them the gospel message and truth so that they can carry their very own shield of truth. Check this out. If a legion works together, then not only is the shield a defensive tool of war, but it becomes an offensive tool. A shield formation allowed a legion of soldiers to advance on an enemy position without taking massive damage or losses. We, like the Roman soldiers, can band together and be on the offense through great defense. By having the shield of faith, we can enter any battleground together as the family of God, armed with the truths of God. And by being in community, we can help remind one another, lift up one another, and teach one another when we get weary, forget, or lose our way. So do you have a shield of faith? Do you pick it up and take it up? If you do, does it resemble the strength of a take-a-lot delivery box? Maybe you feel like you don't have faith at all. We would love for you to join us at Youth on Friday evenings from 7 to 9.30. I hope that you have a great week ahead, guys, and remember to take up your shield of faith.